Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Live Lounge Show. It's all about space clearing, space healing for ourselves, for our homes, for our offices, for our bodies, for any space that we are in that is in need of a pick me up of revitalizing and healing. So Paul and I are going to be talking about various subjects. I'll tell you in a moment. Mm -hmm. The lovely Christine, our soul sister, sister. Yeah. is joining us from Arcadia a little later. She's going to be talking about space cleansing using smudging. Mm. And also, as we laugh, we say herbs, but in America, they say herbs. So she's going to be talking about herbs <laughs> that can help cleanse the body as well. So we've got a really nice, hopefully a good, um, lots of different varieties yeah. of ways to be helping. Yeah, a bit of variety uh, is a spice of life, as they say. Mm. So why do we need to space clear? Well, everything, as we've said on many shows before, everything is energy. And you could see... Um, see it as a higher level of clearing the energy, a higher level to keep that energetic maintenance up and cleared. Just as important as physical cleaning, as our, the physical care of our homes and offices and places of work or places where we are, it's so important that we clear that energetic um, energy as well because that really affects us mentally, emotionally, psychologically and spiritually yeah um and often people uh, can say well what's the difference between like you know our clear clutter is that the same thing no it isn't clearing clutter is actually making um space or greater space for the energy to move around uh, space clearing is actually you're you're clearing the energy you're uplifting the energy you're getting rid of any negativity in that energy and any yeah you're clearing any stagnation yeah um, and because that's what happens with when you do have clutter and also corners of, of houses and things it becomes stagnant the energy can become very stagnant mm. in there yeah so these are some tips and techniques and ideas and thoughts on yeah. how you can get that all yeah. moving and changing and clearing yeah because everything that takes place ever in a building it, it's it's energy so it goes out like that ripple effect from the pebble into the pond and repetitive behaviors and repetitive actions have an effect on us mm. and they have an effect on where we are but the strongest things that actually imprint the energy in a, in the walls in the floors in the ceilings even in the roof the most strongly things that imprint that are, are behaviours or actions of trauma um, or of strong yeah. emotions. Mm -hmm. And they will, you know, I bet there's not one of you that can, can't recall a time you've walked into somewhere that energy hasn't felt right, yeah. it's felt heavy, if there's, you know. And Paul's going to, we just, while I was doing some research on this, I suddenly remembered... Um, something that happened to us when we were on holiday in, in Amsterdam, Amsterdam some yeah. years ago. Yeah, uh, in Amsterdam, there's a, a place called uh, Anne Frank's House. And um, it's probably a very well-known story. Um, during the war, uh, the Anne Frank uh, who, uh, family who were Jewish were hiding in the, um, in the attic space behind a, a, a closed-off door. Um, to avoid being captured by the uh, Nazi Germans at that time. Mm. Um, and this went on for quite a, quite a period years. of time. Um, and there's, and, and Anne Frank was just a young girl and she kept a diary of everything that went on. But when we went to, well, um, actually you reminded me about yeah. uh, before, the day before we went, uh, because as you know, we both do channeling, and one we meditate of meditate wherever yeah. we are. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and Jarama, uh, one of our <clears throat> team um, collectively, it. came through and he said that be prepared for when you're there. Um, the, you know, be aware. just be very aware of, of what's going to take place. And he said, be very aware of how you're feeling mm, emotionally. That's what. And I thought, mm, oh, didn't think too much no, of it. 
so anyway, we, we went along there, we was in line. Um, and, and when we was in line, uh, you yeah, said that you I, were... it was quite instant. All of a sudden I started feeling really queasy and woozy and I thought, Oh, you know, then I thought, oh God, they told me that. Yeah. Because obviously the energies of that whole building were imprinted in it. And they, because obviously I'm very sensitive and I work yeah. with energy, I was really aware of it. And I, Paul said, you need to go out. And I said, but it took me, honestly, it did take me mm. a few, a few good breaths to just yeah. sort of settle and ground that energy. Once I realized mm. what it was, I was able to just try and ground mm. myself and get that in a better place yeah. till we and got then, upstairs. Well, then as we moved through the house, um, everything was fine until we got to towards the top of the house. Um, and this was the room where uh, where they were hiding and when they were found and obviously the, 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 the mayhem that took place fear. at that time, the fear and everything else. Mm. And as we entered into that room, wow, it was just, just mm. straight away, mm. oh, this feels just, heavy. yeah, really heavy, feels terrible. Mm. Um, but then, <laughs> well, when we were when we were in there, uh, there was a, 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 couple. a couple, young family with uh, two young children. One was a little toddler and, and the woman was holding it in her, in her arms. As soon as they came into that room, the little toddler started screaming. Screaming, um, really, and really almost red in the face. Yeah. Was that adamant it wanted to and get And the, the mum couldn't calm them down, oh. and so they decided they walked through. And, and you even said, mm. um, I bet you as soon as they walk out, that baby will stop, mm. um, and did. It did. Just did that. Yeah. Um, the, the was, room was actually where um, there was only a door between them mm. and when the soldiers used to come in and sometimes check mm. that there was nobody, you know, in that particular building, but they were hidden behind the door. So can you imagine the fear mm. that was in that room, you know? So, so yeah, it was very yeah, heavy, but that's quite an extreme case, yeah. I must say. <laughs> but it's also just to, as we spoke about recently that, um, that our bodies can store memories. Mm. Well, it's exactly the same for, for house and objects and, and everything mm. else. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And it's the same on the other hand, you know, yeah. if you go to a, a beautiful wedding or a home where there's a loving couple yeah. and they get mm. on well, you feel those more relaxing, more inviting energies. Yeah. So, you know, we've all, we've all been aware of it. So it's just so important that periodically, um, well, every day we cleanse our house, mm. which is what I'm going to talk about to you in a moment. But periodically, you know, particularly there's been a new job or an end of a relationship or there's somebody had an illness. You know, these are times when you just need to do an extra little cleanse to revitalize and clear the energies. It's really important. So um, I think they, I'll let Paul tell you the other story quickly. Did you want uh, to? Yeah, well, we were asked by a friend um, who was having difficulty uh, selling her house because uh, there was a lot of um, she said there's a lot of negative energy there. So she said, look, you know, she knew that we've done some house clearing and that beforehand. So she said, can you come over and, and, and help me out? So we did, we went over there. Um, and it just goes to show you that the, the energies that need clearing and cleansing aren't just inside the house, they're outside as well. Mm. And as soon as I parked up and I started walking towards the house, it was almost like walking through this curtain mm. of, and all of a sudden, uh, I could just feel this this heaviness and this real sort of like negative mm. energy. Um, but then when we, we we worked in clearing the energy, filling it with light and, and just cleansing. It took quite a while. It did didn't take it? quite a while. Yeah. But then the very next day, yeah. someone came, viewed the house, bought it bought straight it. away. She'd been trying to sell it for about 18 months yeah. or more. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. definitely, you know, clearing mm. that energy yeah. um, and amazing things can happen. Yeah. Mm. So I could talk forever about what I'm going to talk about now, but I'm going to try and condense it a little bit. So I'm going to talk about using um, essential oils for diffusing in your home. Um, and there'd be various different ways I'm going to share with you. Um, the essential oils have been used for thousands of years they were used by the ancient Egyptians the Indians the Chinese and they've been extent and the Greeks um, 
but they've been extensively now scientifically researched and have been shown to be of great benefit. Um, but today I'm going to focus mainly on cleansing the energy in our home, space clearing, but I will mention some of the things as well because it's obviously very clearing and helpful for the body. So um, these also have an effect on every level of our being, mm -hmm. which is why they are so effective in keeping your home and your office, your space clear. They work energetically. They work on the limbic system of the brain, which is related to our emotions, to our feelings, to our memories. So they can uplift us. They can calm us and soothe us. They have so many benefits. Mm. And I just, you know, I love the essential oils. Um, you can also use them in the bath. You can use them in another good thing, which people don't realize you can do. You can also use them in a foot bath. So if you find it difficult to get in and out of a bath or you have an elderly parent or friend, you, it's a lovely thing to just mm. get a big bowl big enough to put both feet in. So that's another good way of getting the oils into your bloodstream where they react with enzymes and hormones mm. and your blood circulation. So that's another good thing, way to use the oils so the first my what well, it was so difficult because i love them but <laughs> my number one oil for cleansing and clearing and purifying the air was juniper berry now juniper berry is really purifying cleansing they say it's the only oil that actually cuts right through to the psyche on a physical level it's often used for gout um, accumulation of toxins so it's good for anything arthritic anything rheum rheumatic um, and it's it's a really good oil for strengthening the mind and body so it's very purifying um, it, it works very well with uh, sandalwood with frankincense and some of the citrus oils because people often say to me well, what do you blend it with because the oils do work better in synergy, meaning two or three. I tend not to use more than three oils together because uh, I think it just masks them a bit. But that does blend well. It's a lovely sort of sweet, woody mm. aroma um, and it brings upliftment. It protects against negativity. And as I say, it's an excellent choice if you want to cleanse toxins from the body as well. Just one word of caution, not to be used if you're pregnant, <laughs> because it's actually, it stimulates the uterine muscle. So we don't want that. So don't use that if you're having a baby. <laughs> um, but that's a really good oil, protects against negativity, cleans and clears and um, brings upliftment. So my next oil is Oh, this is one of my absolute favourite. Paul knows. Have yeah, a sniff. I know. You can still smell it even without sandalwood. Now, do you know sandalwood, the tree has to be at least or over 30 years old before it can produce the actual oil wow. for sandalwood. And it's a really thick sort of syrupy oil and it's what we call a base note so it lasts you know top notes like the citrus notes they they might diffuse very quickly and after an hour or so you won't smell them as well but the base note will last for hours as long as you've got either plugged in diffuser going which some people prefer to use with children I said to Paul mm. or if you're clumsy you wouldn't want to use a candle <laughs> um, particularly at, you know if you use things for night time for bedtime for children I'd just say if you're going to use it for insomnia or you know you've been anxious or you just feel you need soothing put the burner or diffuser on in the bedroom about an hour before you'd retire to bed so it's filled that room um, but sandalwood is a really good cleanser as well. It's um, it's a lovely, deep, soft, woody aroma, and it's a lot of people's favourites. It's good for bereavement. It's good for grief. It's really good for any mental or emotional blocks. Um, so if you're feeling blocked, sometimes I say it's not always your energy. It can be the mm. energy in your home or the office. So that's a really good one to use. And again, that is it's it's a nice one for men as well. It's often used in aftershave and perfumery and it's used <clears throat> extensively for incense as well. A lovely sacred oil. So the next one is frankincense. Now, this 
Another one of my favourites has been used since antiquity. Lots, lots of favourites. <laughs> yeah, it's used by the an ancient Egyptians. They used it to um, rejuvenate face masks. They used it for all sorts of skin conditions. It's antiseptic. All the oils are antiseptic, so they're all good at clearing, but some have more properties, I must say, than others. Um, it dissolves away negativity and it's a lovely, warm, rich aroma. And that, again, blends beautifully with sandalwood, juniper. I like it with rosemary, which leads me on to my fourth one, rosemary. Rosemary um, has been used through antiquity. It's, it is a stimulant. And I just a little word of caution. If you've got pets, cats or dogs in the house, don't use this too strongly you know in a burner in a in a medium sized room you'd probably use between 12 to 15 drops in combination so you might use six of one four of another three of another um, but if you're going to use rosemary and you've got pets in the house use it in a very low dilution don't use more than two or three drops because it's highly stimulating um, and you don't want them being all hyper and upset because animals, animals have got a much stronger sense of smell, as we know, than we mm. have. Um, but it is also really great for any mental fatigue. It's good for the memory. When I was taking exams, you know, I'd, I've, I, mm. I'd use a rosemary on a handkerchief or a tissue and just inhale it every so often. Um, don't use them neat on the skin. But it's a really it's also insect repellent and it's a lovely fresh aroma, but really good at strengthening, at purifying and cleansing the energies. So the last one, although I could go on forever, is tea tree. Now, tea tree is a highly prized effective oil, been medically and scientifically proven to be effective on all three infectious organisms. So that's viruses fungi and bacteria mm. so it's a great one to use it's a, also a very powerful immune stimulant but if you want it to strengthen the immune system obviously you need to get it in the bloodstream so you'd either use it regularly in baths or in a massage um, oil or lotion but um, used in small doses it is okay neat on the skin but not everybody can tolerate it so you know i'd say use that with caution but it's really good for purifying a good uh, immune stimulant and very very mm. blends nicely again with um tea tree with sandalwood mm. frankincense and it was used in sarah by the aboriginal people in australia mm. um, and i say it's been extensively researched so that's another really good one it helps the body respond to the the threat of infectious diseases, of fungi, of bacteria. So really good to use mm. on a regular basis. You know, I use oils every single yeah. day. Makes if such I, a difference. Yeah, I use mm. it in a lotion on um, my whole body every day. And if I'm going out, particularly now, I put neat lavender. I, I use French lavender, Lavendula augustifolia. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll put four or five drops on my throat, the back of my neck, on my wrist. And you've got lymph points at the base of your toes as well and in the groin. But really good. I just feel it really gives me that extra bit mm. of protection. So, yeah, they kill airborne bacteria yeah. and mm. they're great for pure. And you can use them every day. So you haven't got to worry about how often should I do it. Mm. But, you know, you can have the stimulating ones in the day and the yeah. calming, relaxing ones yeah. in the evening. There you go. Yeah. And that's it. So and, and obviously, if you're changing the energies within yourself, you're also changing it within the room and everything around you. Mm. But we've also used um, before now, we've actually used uh, Tibetan bells as well. Mm. So so here they are. Um, and I want to do them too loud because it can be quite loud. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can hear that, but we've actually used those to um, and we, we go in around a room, moving in the clockwise direction, but getting into the corners. So you're helping to uh, to actually you're uh, really helping to dissipate Dissipate. that energy um, and you're you're moving it. Whereas it's stagnant and you're just moving it around. Um, 
We've also used a little bell, yeah. so you're flicking that, and it's uh, it's the sound of it. But also, uh, we've used some clapping before now. I said to Paul, we haven't done that. We sound yeah, really weird. He said we have because it breaks def- up the engine. Can you imagine us can't you, <laughs> running around the house, <laughs> clapping our yeah. hands, ticking our bells, yeah. burning the oils and incense? But uh, uh, yeah, another hippies. thing to yeah, well, yeah, hey, well, it's the new age of the hippie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think also to uh, another thing to be very much aware of, especially this day and age of electronics, is mm. all of the electrical equipment that we mm. have around the house. Um, and it might be your, your TV, your computer, your mobile phone, which is always on us. We're often looking at it and mm. checking. Um, yeah, it's your laptops, headphones, particularly mm. Bluetooth headphones. Mm. Um, they're all emitting this uh, electromagnetic field, mm. often referred to as, as EMFs. Um, and a side effect of that, of being being bombarded this whole time of those EMFs, it might be uh, some sleep disorders. Uh, you might be having struggle sleeping mm. or broken sleep. Headaches. Um, yeah, headaches. You've also got some general lethargy or general fatigue, mm. um, a, a lack of concentration. Um, these are all effects. So, you know, just give that some thought to how maybe times when you're affected by, by some of these things that because it's an everyday nature that you kind of just put it off. Mm. Um, and a way of dealing with that is um, using crystals. Now, uh, there's loads of crystals you can use, but two very key ones are uh, black uh, tourmaline and shungite. Now, mm. Got my yeah on. yeah so have i as well <laughs> so um and, and the way the crystals work is that they the energy of the crystals help to um it interacts with the emfs that are, uh, that are being emitted and it helps to neutralize them um so and in some instances they can actually just be completely uh, taken away or they can be severely or vastly reduced um, and the less EMFs that we're being bombarded with, the better. Mm. So as you say, you can wear them if you've got it as a little pendant or something, or you can put it in your pocket, in your purse. Yeah. Um, My friend has them in a car. Yeah, or you can also, um, uh, really importantly, place them around your equipment. Mm. But more importantly, place them between Sweet. your equipment and yourself. Um, and that's why this is really good. Um, and you can buy these um, like as a, as a pre-made necklace. And um, this is actually uh, shungite. Shungite and quartz. Yeah, and, and some other things in there. Um, and, and it's helping to repel that energy so that you, you're keeping yourself fresher. But also the crystals will work on you. So that they're actually helping to cleanse and to ground you mm. and to create that, that greater, um, a greater balance within yourself. Yeah. Now we have also used, um, and before you, okay. if you haven't got black tourmaline or, or shungite, don't just run out and think, oh, I'm gonna buy that. No. Um, we've used smoky quartz before yeah, now. That's really good yeah. actually for repelling. And we've paper. also used I clear quartz. quartz. So, but whatever crystals you've got, mm-hmm. try them, yeah. you know, before you go rushing out and adding to them, place them around, put them in your pocket, yeah. put them at your bedstand at night. Um, if you're in between you and your phone, if you have your phone at the side mm. of the bed um, and it would just help um, just really, it breaks up any of those EMFs that mm. are being emitted. Yeah. Um, so so very, very simple, very easy to do. Yeah. Um, but it's also really important to regularly clean and cleanse mm. your crystals. And you can do it by putting them out into the light of a full moon. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a song in title in there somewhere. <laughs> or is that by the light of a silvery, silvery moon? moon. Yeah. 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 Um, you can put them under running water. Um, I like to use natural spring water if possible. Um, or you can either reiki them or just any uh, energy, send energy to them and cleanse them yeah. with that. But do that on a regular basis because not only are they emitting the energy, but they also partly and to disrupt the EMFs, mm. but they're also partly absorbing it as well. Mm. So important, definitely regularly clean them. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's time 
to you. Yes, I to think go it is. over to, to our okay. soul sister, to Hang Arcadia. On. I'm just going to uh, ask uh, Christine, Christine to, to unmute. unmute. And then uh, Christine's going to talk to us about cleansing your space using smudging techniques and smudging the body, but also, but also the use of herbs. Christine, are you there? Hello, hello. hello. I'm here. Can you hello. hear me? <laughs> good evening, everyone. How is everyone? Or good day, depending on what time of day it is where you are. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so of course, being the master herbalist, I always love to talk about the herbs because herbs can be used in so many different ways. And smudging, I love smudging. Yeah. I'm, you all may not know this, but they actually have done scientific studies on smudging and they have proven mm -hmm. that the action of smudging actually does, you know, we, we like the energetic idea of cleansing, but they've actually scientifically proved that there's antimicrobial properties to smudging. Mm. So when you release that smoke into the air, it actually does cleanse the air and it does kill harmful bacteria and things like that. Yeah, so those I use Americans, it. More. Those shamans knew what exactly that? what they were doing. Mm. Exactly. You know, so I use it more for energetic purposes, but, you know, I figured the rest of it is, is benefits. But I did want to talk about, because I know most people, when they hear about smudging, a lot of people will use the white sage. And, of course, I have, I have white sage myself that I like to burn. And I use my, uh, my little smudge bowl. Aww. So, and so when you, you can do the sage, and that's one, but sometimes it's hard to find. So, um, it, you know, and you have to order it like long distances. Some people, you know, like to be, you know, friendly with regard to like shipping and things like that. Like if, if you can find it locally from a local farmer or even in your yard, right? It, it's, it's a lot better than shipping something through the mail. Mm -hmm. So um, I do like to order the sage and I like to have that on hand, but there's also other herbs that you can use as well. And one of them that is really easy to find, especially here in Florida, is pine. Oh. So pine needles are a really good smudging tool. Um, there's also, there's so many choices. It's, I loved, Caroline, that you, that you talked about rosemary, which is um, next to thyme, probably one of my most favorite um, herbs, especially in the kitchen. I cook a lot with yeah. rosemary. And I always have a fresh rosemary plant right out my front door. You know, I don't, I don't have flowers planted in my front little stoop area. I have herbs and <laughs> yeah. uh, sweet potatoes and things like farm girl. Yay. So Thank those you. are the types of things I have growing up there. So rosemary is a really awesome smudging herb as well as thyme, you know, um, thyme herb. Uh, but other ones that are good, that are popular, like one that's popular with the Native Americans is sweet grass. Now, that's not one that I personally grow, and I've actually never tried it, but I've been wanting to because I hear it's a really wonderful smudging herb. Uh, but another one is mugwort, which supposedly has a wonderful aroma. And then one of them that I just thought was really sweet that I had to bring up, I'm a big fan of catnip because I know many of you who have cats, hint, hint, you know what it does to your cats, right? Well, yeah. Did you know that catnip has the exact opposite effect to humans? So it drives cats crazy. It puts humans to sleep. Oh. So if you ever have catnip tea, it's also called cat mint. It's just another common name for it. But if you ever try that, like a catnip tea before bed, it actually does help you sleep. Mm. So one other one we didn't talk about, and this is one that I that I order online because um, mm. it's, it's not something I've been able to find locally, is the Palo Santo. Have you all heard of this before? This yeah. is one of the few, like you can, when you burn your, when you burn your herbs and you do your smudging, you can use the loose herbs. So this is my loose sage, but you can also use the bundles, right? The little smudge bundles. Um, and then in the case of Palo Santo, it is simply um, a wood and it has a divine aroma to it. It's, it's, sage is very, um, has that sharp kind yeah. of scent to it but the palo santo has this like sweetness to it and all i do is you know i set it on fire obviously mm -hmm. and then just give it a few moments kind of like 
you know, when you're doing a wick on a candle and then you blow it out and then you've got that little bit of an ember. Mm. And what I do is I'll just take it like this. Sometimes I'll carry my little bowl with me just in case some of the, the embers fall off. But, you know, my smudging technique is I just, I, I, I dance. I just, I move and I flow with my arms and my hand and I make sure I hit all of the areas in the room. I go into the corners and I go in circular motions and I go up and down and I will go through the whole room like that. And if there's particular, like I love little statues. I'm not much of a tchotchke person, but when it comes to fairies and archangels, I love statues. So I've got, you know, so I, I always work carefully on my, on my statues so that they're <laughs> cleansed because my statues are my, my four element statues. So we have, you know, air, fire, water, and earth. And I use a lot for rituals. And that's another time, you know, I will cleanse a room when, whenever I've had a shift happen in my life, whenever something big happens, whether it's a good thing or a uncomfortable thing or a growing thing or a learning thing, I like to smudge when it comes time to you know, shifting and changing in life. It also, I also do it when I do rituals because those are all about change, changing into new seasons. So the equinoxes and the solstices. So I like to do it for that. But I also like to do it like um, not only when I move into a new home or a new space or a new office, but recently I had a big change at home because my, my elderly father lives with me and we decided to make a change and move some rooms around to make some things more easily accessible for my, my dad. So, you know, I put him in his room, but so now I'm on the other side of my house and I just want to clear the space for my own energy. So I, I do my ritual. I get out my sage or my Palo Santo or my pine and I will go in through the new rooms now and just sort of claim and set my intentions that any energies that aren't supportive of me, they don't even necessarily have to be negative energies, but they're energies that aren't supportive of my intentions, my goals, my dreams and my space and my workflow. So I always go through setting these intentions and doing my dance with my little bowl and setting these intentions, clearing the energy in the space. Yeah. So that's how I like to use my Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we're well, going to talk very so, uh, briefly about the cleansing of the body with herbs before we go. Absolutely, because we need to cleanse our space. And of course, when you do the smudging, you can also clean, you know, smudge your body by letting the smoke go all around your body. But when it comes to herbs for internal cleansing, because I don't know, Carol and I, Caroline and I were talking earlier, you know, we're coming up on spring. So this is a great topic because this is like spring cleaning and you can do spring cleaning on your body. And I'm a huge proponent. I, cleanses are important and all these long rituals that you can do with certain cleanses are good. But if you wanted to do something really simple and easy for your body, the one thing that I particularly think is really important is periodically throughout the year is doing a liver cleanse. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you need to do for a liver cleanse is you can drink some herbal teas, like either some milk thistle or some burdock tea. Also, red clover is a good one because that's good for the liver, but it's also good for the bloodstream. Um, but personally, one thing that's really easy is I just buy a liver formula. And I'm a big oh, fan of Christopher yeah. Brand because that's the education I took. Uh, Christopher's School of Natural Healing out in Utah is where I got my training as an herbalist. So I just like those formulas. And the liver formula, I just take it three times a day for four to six weeks and at the same time that I'm doing that, I make sure I clean up my diet really good. All organic fruits and vegetables, lots of fruits and vegetables and fresh grains. I lay off, and not that I eat meat very often anyway, but I would just lay off all of that. And I just give my body this wonderful, fresh, healthy, natural food and take my liver formula. And since your liver cleanses all the toxins out of your body, and we live with so many toxins these days in our yeah, environment, definitely. you know, with the pollution and, and yeah. there's just so much of it out there that our livers really get tired. Mm. So if there's one part of your body that can really benefit from a regular cleanse, and I, I'll do it two to three times a year, especially in the spring. Mm. Um, whether you want to drink some of those teas that I mentioned, or if you just want to find yourself a liver formula or a liver tonic, um, anything like that will work really, really well. Fantastic. So there's some great ideas for you. Yeah. And I tell you what, if you're dragging on your energy and you're feeling like sleepy all the time and you don't know, try doing a liver cleanse and the, you're, you won't believe it. 
yeah. you don't believe your energy returning to you yeah. when your liver is back in shape again. Yeah. Well, we've been talking right, about doing a, a liver cleanse. Haven't yeah. We? Yeah. We meant to do it in the new year, but uh, oh, maybe oh, down into spring, it's a good time to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I did one with Epsom yeah. salt, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very clear. And yeah. oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, and then just one last thing, just because yeah. I lit them. The, the, the Himalayan salt lamps, and these are my <gasps> Himalayan candle holders. Those are really good for cleansing too. It works with the ions in yes. the air. And yeah. that helps cleanse your space and cleanse your energy and cleanse the air as well. Mm. Yeah, they're so pretty to have as yeah. well, aren't they? Just give a lovely warm yeah. glow. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. And they double up as yeah. a nightlight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I know in England they, they know um, about milk thistle. Some of the um, blends, they might be different, but I'm sure if people look for the liver cleanse blend, they'll find it. Christine, thank yeah, you. Thank Brilliant you. as ever. Thank you so much. So yeah, really good advice yeah. there. Really good guidance. Fantastic. Um, and I think and what you said about the, the, the quality is so important because um, with the, the sage, when we've been burning, we've got a good friend, mm -hmm. uh, not mentioning any names, Billy, <laughs> um, but he, he gets us a really good quality yeah, uh, sage. sage and it does make yeah. such a difference it does definitely yeah. makes such a difference i'm just going to give you a couple of things not to use um around the home mainly because of the chemicals and i have had some people had quite bad allergic reaction to them you know you can get these um plug-in air fresheners don't use them avoid them at all costs because they're so full of chemicals they've given people all sorts of you know headaches anxiety some uh, uh, sleep issues so avoid those use essential oils use something but always look for when you buy essential oils always look for 100 percent pure not fragrance because that means that it's not a pure mm. essential oil um I'm going to I'm hopefully going to run you through a very quick cleansing visualization but just quickly two more things plants are really good around the home because they clear the air clear the oxygen and fresh flowers but again make sure you haven't got any allergies mm. so we're going to finish with a really quick cleanse I was hoping we were going to get the time down but we've all waffled on as usual so I'm going to do a really quick cleanse so if you want to close your eyes you'd like to you can place your hands on your heart and just take a couple of nice long breaths ah oh, just feel you're letting go and then imagine just above your head there's a beautiful white or golden shaft of light and that light is full of cleansing purifying and healing energies so imagine that light now streaming down in and around your head, soothing, cleansing and purifying. As it goes down into your neck, into your spine, down into your shoulders. Imagine it's almost sparkling with light as it's cleansing and purifying your mind, your body and your emotions. Imagine it flowing down both arms, all the way down into your hands, shining out through the fingertips, cleansing, purifying. And then breathe that light into your upper body, upper chest, chest, the lungs, the heart, your upper back cleansing as it moves down to cleanse and purify in and around your middle body all those internal organs the liver pancreas spleen the stomach and going down into your lower abdomen filling and surrounding as it glows around your lower body down into your legs, all the way down through the knees, behind the knees, 
flowing down as it cleanses and purifies down into your ankles and your feet. And just imagine that light now is going down to the floor below into Mother Earth, cleansing, dissipating any negative energies. Feel you have really accomplished that cleansing. Now, obviously, that was a little bit quick because of time. But if you had more time, you could take 10, 15 minutes and wherever you're sitting, you could send that light out to fill each and every room of your home with a cleansing, purifying energy. So mm. thank you. I'm sorry that was so short, but you get the idea. You can go on to YouTube. I've got a light transmission meditation on Caroline Crawford, um, Timeless Teachings on YouTube. But thank you so, so much for joining us. We really love being with you. We really appreciate your time all around Sarasota, Arcadia, down in the Comis and over there in Australia. <laughs> thank you so much. We feel your energy and um, just so happy that you spent your time to be with us. We hope you've discovered something a little bit new to help you give you a boost to give you an uplift and to give you something to mm. perhaps go and research and inspire a bit more within you mm. and you can um uh, go over to our, our website uh, soulcrew.biz and you can mm -hmm. find some more information there yeah. um as well as links to all, all the youtube uh, sites that we all have yeah. uh, connecting with those meditations those longer meditations yes. to help cleanse yourself um, and we'd also like to say thank you to everyone for their donations. Really appreciate it. Help keeping us going. Yeah. So we'll be here next month on the 17th of March. We'll let you know what the topic will be a little bit closer to the time. Thank you so much. So from our hearts to yours, sending you all our love. Thank you so much. And from the Soul Crew. Bye, bye for, for now. now. Love you. Mwah. Take care of yourselves mm -mm. and keep that cleansing going. Yay. <laughs>